this is the state of chess.com at the moment, and I don't know what chess.com is supposed to do about it, uh, in all honesty. Like, you know, I understand it's really difficult to spot, especially because he's really tactically doing this. It is episode 14 of the Kara Khan vs. Everything Speedrun. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Alex, and in this series we play one 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on chess.com. And regardless of whether we get the white or the black pieces, we play a Karo Khan-esque setup look looking to try to explore the ideas of the opening. I will try to explain my thought process as to why I'm making moves, the other candidate moves that I'm considering, and the lines that I'm calculating as best as I can while I'm playing the game, and then go deeper into the analysis afterwards with the help of the computer. I hope you guys find this educational and enjoyable. Let's get into the game. All right, all right, our opponent goes e4, so we get a proper Karo Khan. We don't have to settle for some Slav setup, which, of course, many of the same ideas still apply, but this is, you know, a more pure Karo Khan, because it's the Karo Khan. And, yeah, our opponent has a variety of different moves. He chooses e5, which is the advanced variation. Typically, this is considered to be, like, the best way for white to try and fight for an advantage. At least that's how I see it. Maybe knight to d2 or knight c3 is the other way, or the two knights with knight f3, knight c3, and not including the move d4. But yeah, he chooses e5, and typically black will respond with bishop to f5 or c5. c5 is the line that I personally like to go for, and you just go for the center straight away. The reason that I don't play bishop f5 um the idea is to play bishop f5 and then go e6 is because i want my opponent to play a move like knight f3 so i can play bishop g4 to pin the knight to the queen which you can't do until the knight goes to f3 because otherwise you just hang a bishop right so we're going to go knight c6 we're going to continue fighting over the dark squares in the center my opponent goes c3 i believe taking is the move because my opponent can't take with the knight because then I'll take. So I, you're supposed to take and then play bishop g4 after he takes back. Because yeah, if knight takes, I'm pretty sure you just take on e5. Can I not just take on e5? Bishop to b5 check. Bishop d7. No, I'm pretty sure we just win a pawn here. I, I really hope I'm not blundering something, but I think my opponent might have just given me a pawn for free. And to be fair to him, you kind of would assume that you just I just take the knight, but um, no, that isn't forced, obviously. Yeah, he just attacks my knight, so I think dropping back to c6 is probably the move. Um, nothing, No need for anything fancy. We're not really threatening the move e5, because my opponent can take on c6. And also attack my queen in the process. Bishop d7 is, of course, the move we want to be playing here, I believe. We also want to make sure this knight can't join up with the bishop on c7 and, you know, deliver quite a nasty fork. So that's something to bear in mind. We want to play moves like knight to f6. If I can, that's probably the next developing move I want to play. We're also posing a bit of a problem to white, though, because our knight is no longer pinned, so we can take on d4. If knight d4 only takes back, we win a bishop. So knight d4, he has to play the intermezzo, bishop d7, check. Queen d7, pawn d4. And we can probably just go knight to f6, and we're chilling. This knight, because he developed it d2, rather than a square like a3, Obviously, he can't develop it to c3. He can't use this knight to try and get into it to b5 or d5 somehow and then go to c7 because he's put it on d2, which means he can go to b3 or f3, and that will take a very long time for him to access the c7 square. He'd have to do something like knight d2, knight b3, knight d4, knight b5, and obviously that is an incredibly long journey. So we're going to take. We're up a pawn, remember? So trading is obviously in our favor. We can consider the move bishop to b... Sorry, not bishop. Queen to b5, which would block my opponent from castling and attack the b2 pawn. But I don't, one, I don't want to take the b2 pawn because that's incredibly dangerous. It looks like a poison, 
poisoned pawn, but secondly, I need to develop. So knight to f6 or e6 are probably the moves that I want to play. Knight f6. I mean, they're probably both exactly the same in terms of how good they are. There's no checks on our king either, because we covered his diagonal. And like I say, this knight, we have no risk of it getting into b5 to go to c7 because of the way it's positioned. Geometrically, it would have to go like knight b1, knight c3, knight b5 to get there. And obviously that's a massive waste of time. We can consider the move queen e6 check. And obviously, if queen e2, we trade the queens. But to be honest, we have such little development that, I mean, one, he doesn't have to do that. He could just play king f1. And you could consider, like, queen to a6, something like that. It's a bit complicated, unnecessarily. But you could also just play a move like bishop to e3. He can't play bishop to e5. But, yeah. Even queen e6, queen e2 takes takes... We just have such little development. Rook c8, rook c1. Uh, we have nothing. We probably have to do like... Yeah, we can't even stop him from getting into c7 because um, the bishop helps control that square. So that would be an issue. So I think knight f6 is the move that I want to play. Just developing. He goes rook c1. And this is his idea. Maybe we should have gone... In retrospect, e6 and then meet rook c1 with bishop d6. But we could just go rook c8. Rook c8, rook c8, queen c8, queen to a4. And the point is that this hangs. So if we go like queen d7, queen a8, sorry, queen a7. Ah, maybe e6, bishop d6 was necessary then. Um, hmm. Let's think, let's think. Well, rook c7, we can meet with something like queen e6 check. I suppose. We could play it immediately. Queen e6 check. Queen e2 with takes takes. He's still getting his rook in though. Still getting the rook in. Um. Okay, if he goes rook c7, we could just play a move like queen b5 to just keep an eye on the b7 pawn and stop queen to a4. That's not awful. Not awful. I would like to play a move like knight h5 to challenge the bishop, but the queen controls that square. So maybe we just go e6. It looks a bit uncomfortable. And yeah, I probably should have gone e6 rather than knight f6. So we could have met rook c1 with bishop d6. But it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Queen b5 stops him from castling as well. Uh, he could go a4 to try and deflect my queen. Because it's obviously supported by his queen. And I don't want to take on b2, like I said, that's not the idea. I mean, maybe it's playable, but white just castles and I'm kind of scared. He offers me a queen trade. Unexpected. Unexpected. If takes takes, he's getting ready to play rook hc1. Um, Takes takes... b7 hangs. I don't love it, I don't love it. We could go queen b6, just keep eyes on a lot of different things, and avoid the queen trade. Queen b6, castles, then we can play bishop d6 maybe? Although bishop d6, queen d6, rook b7, he gets the pawn back. If queen b2, castles, I can't take on d4 because of queen b5 check. Mm, it's something like mm, takes takes b6 rook c1 rook c8 is a threat that's maybe we can go king d8 but then we hang f7 so not in love with it not in love with it um okay this is tricky this is tricky 
Queen b6 is the move that I'm considering. Queen b6, castle, I think is the most natural move. Bishop d6 isn't really playable. Because he will take on b7 at the end. I mean, maybe I have to go for that. Something like queen b6, castles, bishop d6, takes, 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 castle. Rook c1. Rook b8. That doesn't look that bad. I'm going to go queen b6. Usefully, he doesn't have knight to c4 to attack our queen. I just think trading queens is the wrong idea here. And I think we kind of forced to play bishop d6, because I hate the pressure that he has. And if he gets rook c1 in, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, because he'll be threatening checks on our back rank. So we need to castle quickly. Bishop to e7. Uh, then we can't castle, because he'll take. We could consider the move bishop to b4. To get the bishop out of danger. Rook c1, castle. I suppose that is playable. And then we do maintain the extra pawn as well. Does he have any other threats? Bishop b4. Maybe bishop e5 is annoying. Because he's trying to take the knight and ruin my structure. Although his rook would hang if he tried to do that. Something like bishop b5, rook c1, castle, bishop e5. Um, that is annoying. That is annoying. Because I don't know where to move the knight. I don't want to move the knight to e8, obviously. Then he just goes rook c8. And he still has an attack going anyway. So I'm going to go bishop d6. Bishop e5 might be better. But I'm just not sure about it. I'm really unsure. And this looks very solid. Okay, I honestly missed that move. Ah, this is a bit of an issue. I missed that. Oh, not good. Really not good. Knight d7 takes. I just thought his rook was under attack. And he had to answer. Mm, knight d7, queen b7. We have to go queen e, sorry, king e7, which is a horrific move to have to play. Knight d7, queen b7, rook d8. Queen a7, castle. This is awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, there's no reason to have allowed this. Okay, rook c1. Also incredibly annoying. Rook d8 is probably the move. Could we do this? Well, then he has rook c8. Then he has rook c8, and we're in big trouble. Yeah, I think we've just got to cut our losses, to be honest. We're probably going to go down a pawn at the end of the day, because he's going to win these pawns, and these pawns are scary. But we can try and create counterplay. God, after I castle, he's going to play rook c7. No, he takes here first. I mean, he's still going to go like this at some point. Uh, we could consider playing this, but we actually don't have a mate because the knight always blocks. Um, knight f6 maybe is just the simplest. Because I think we need to try and switch the attention to the center and the king side. Because he's crushing us on the queen side, obviously. We do have the idea of rook b8 now that the knight isn't hanging to pick up the b2 pawn. So there's still a lot of chances. Thankfully, our center is still incredibly strong. Which, you know, that is typical of the Karo. g3, I think, is a practical move. It gives the king an escape square and stops queen f4, which is a move that I wanted to play. We could consider rook b8 now, though. Rook b8, queen c5 is annoying. I don't want to trade queens. Rook b8, queen c5. 
Mm. You could consider knight e4. And after takes takes, the d-pawn is under attack. And if he goes something like rook b1. Rook b8. But then taking on b7 won't come with an attack on the knight, which is part of the reason that I think rook b8, rook b2 is good. Okay, let's consider rook b8 again. Rook b8, queen c5. Take. If rook takes, then I'm chilling. But the issue is rook b8, queen c5 takes, pawn takes. Rook to b2. Let's say knight b3. Knight e4. Going after f2. That doesn't look horrible. I think this is our best idea. My opponent has apparently disconnected, which is honestly quite annoying because I want to try and prove that I have enough counterplay here to, I mean, maybe even win this, to be honest. Okay, he's back. See how much time he takes here. He's been playing incredibly quickly. I didn't even consider rook b7. I don't know why. The issue is, if I go rook b7, queen b7, rook b8, he has rook c8 to check. And he forces trades. Mm, okay. What about rook c8? So I don't really want to take. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. Okay, what about rook c8? If takes, takes. He doesn't have rook b8 because our queen controls that square. And we kind of have some sort of attack. If rook a8 going after a2, he can't go rook a7, obviously. But I think he just plays a move like a4. And he gets the pawns going. And then he's going to play a move like rook c7, and I'm going to be in big trouble. I mean, I am defending, I guess. Okay, rook a8, a4. We're essentially just moving the rook with tempo. Playing really sloppily. Really sloppy. Um, I'm considering e5 to just force things open in the center. But, don't know. Don't know how well that works. I think rook c8 might be the best idea. I don't know if I want to trade a pair of rooks. However, if rook a8, he is also going to get this rook in. And that could be quite scary after a move like knight f3 and knight e5 going after f7. So I think I probably have to do this. He could play a move like rook c5 to try and trade on his terms. But I don't know. I think we have knight e4. And if takes takes, then d4 is loose. And we also maybe have e3 at some point to try and break things apart on the king side and get some kind of perpetual or even a checkmating attack. The trades, I don't think I've missed anything because rook, rook b8 isn't playable. I need to try and create a luft for my king. I think h5 probably. Because I need an escape square. Then I can try and activate this rook. I'm also trying to play a move like h4 to like, create some kind of mating net. He does have this pushing through, and it's really hard to stop. We could go rook b6 to stop this, but rook b6, rook b6, sorry, rook c6, rook b6, and he's forcing trades. h4, a6, h3, a7, check, knight f1. I don't see the way in. Ah, very annoying. Rook a8. He can't go a6. Rook a8, rook b6. Queen c7, threatening queen c1. And if rook c6, then uh, we can play something like rook a5 or queen a5. But rook a5 I kind of like because then c2 is going to fall. Unless he plays like rook c2, but that's very, very passive. We just play something like rook b4, and that looks very nice. 
yeah, let's go rook a8. We need to make sure that he can't do this. He can't really advance because we'll take it. Probably with the rook, to be honest. But he's not going to advance it. Yeah, the issue is he has very good control over the f1 square. So even if we get h4, h3 in, it's very difficult to set up a mate. I needed to play h5, however, regardless. One, because it actually poses a threat and maybe we can bait a move like h4 out of him to weaken his king side. But also it gives um, an escape square for my king because I need to try and get my rook involved in the game. See, if we didn't have this move played and I played rook a8, my opponent could still play a6 because if I tried to trade there, then he could play rook to b8 and I would have no way to defend myself unless I gave up my queen for the rook with queen c8, rook c8, and rook c8, because knight to e8 wouldn't work. The knight isn't coming to f8 like his knight is going to f1. It's different. The king doesn't defend e8. The king does defend f1. So, yeah, we're going to have to try and make him prove this. I'm really not sure about the opening. I feel like we got the best of the opening, but knight f6 was inaccurate. I think uh, e6 was necessary. Because all of our problems have come from my opponent exploiting the c-file. All of them. So, kind of annoying, but okay, that's chess. Okay, goes knight b3. He does control the c1 square. The knight might be coming to c5 to support a6. Makes sense. Knight e4 is the move that I want to play. Just to put some pressure. Knight e4, knight c5. What do I want to do there? Because a6 is a threat. If I take... If pawn takes queen e5, then we have chances. If knight e4, knight c5 takes and queen takes, 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 takes. I don't know if we can draw this because he has two connected past pawns. We have like b4 and I think we're done. So knight e4, knight c5, takes, queen takes. We can't really take. Um, what about queen to a6, attacking the rook and a5? He has rook b5. Rook c8. Queen b4. I think... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is the move I want to play, though. I don't know if I want to take the knight when he plays knight c5, however. He could... Well, we could play a move like queen d7. Didn't consider that. My knight relinquished control. And if queen d7, a5 is also protected by the knight. Queen d7, if takes, takes. Ah, uh, that's a bit of an issue. It's a bit of an issue. Maybe we have to go queen f8. Okay, he goes knight c5, though. He goes knight c5. Um, I think we should take it. Yeah, but then we get some counterplay. No? I know his queen can come back to f1, but then pawns start falling. So I'll have these kinds of attacks. And I'll always, always have threats of coming and delivering perpetuals if he keeps his queen here. Really? Is this not a perpetual? Because if Oh, the rook defends. What am I on about? The rook defends. Um, ah, then that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Why am I missing so many obvious things? This is a terrible day. Terrible day. Queen b3 keeps pressure, keeps pressure, and keeps pressure. Sorry, queen c3 even. But if queen to c3, maybe king g2. 
Don't know. We could try and push the, the deep horn to deflect some of his pieces. If he goes b5, then um, I assume we just take something like this. Okay. Oh, I honestly missed that. It's a very annoying move because his queen is still helping. Threat is b7, rook b8. So maybe we go king h7, but then he takes the f pawn. h4. Doesn't actually carry a threat. d4, a7. d3, rook b8, king h7, rook a8, d2. Then he has rook h8, king h8, queen, king back, and queen to f3 to defend. Ah, uh, this is really, really not in my favor right now. Hmm, completely missed this idea. If king h7, maybe I just have to give this pawn up. I think that's probably the practical choice. Because if rook f7, then we can take on b4. And then maybe we can survive. Plays a7 anyway. So we, this isn't a threat, because we'll take. Maybe we can now go d4. If d4, rook f7. Queen to b4. Queen e3 check. Sorry, queen d3 check. Why am I getting all my coordinates wrong? Um, king h6? We could go f5 to block the diagonal off forever, though. Okay, I'm actually going to do f5. I, I want to block this, and I also want to make sure he can't take. Okay. Check here. Okay, we're going to have to push, I think. Oh, no, he's taking on um, h5. I missed h5 was hanging. Ah, uh, no, we're just getting mated. Absolutely horrific. Absolutely horrific. I don't know where I went wrong. Um, well, no, I think I do know where I went wrong. I think uh, knight f6 was just a terrible, terrible move. Like, my opponent played with 93.3% accuracy. Oh my god, he joined 29 minutes ago. I'm the first game he's played. Oh, that that sucks. That sucks. I have no idea if he's cheated or not. Ugh, I've literally been making a point of when I play rapid games, clicking on my opponent's name and making sure they've at least been playing, like they've, they've had their account for at least like six months. Because these new accounts, they could mean anything. He could genuinely be a good player, or he could actually be cheating. Oh, and he was playing so quickly as well. We have the normal Caro. We have c5, knight f3, knight c6, c3, cd4. And you have to take back with the c-pawn. Like, you have to do this. To maintain the center. He takes back with the knight, though. We take on e5, which is the correct move. Bishop f4 is a mistake. This is really weird. This is really weird, right? Because this Bishop f4 makes zero sense. It makes no sense. A move like knight b5 makes sense to prepare bishop f4. A move like bishop b5 check makes sense. Something like this. And with the moves that my opponent was finding later in the game, like, how, and 
with the speed at which he found them, how how would he play something so stupid like knight takes d4? It's just an idiotic move. And then bishop f4, achieving nothing. Apparently knight c6 is a miss though. Knight g6. I didn't want to abandon this diagonal. Or allow this. But here the bishop just hangs. So you've got to retreat the bishop and then what, like e5? Bishop e5, bishop e7. Queen e2, pinning and defending. Yeah, no. We didn't play this the best, but we still have a great position, really. Knight d2. Again, this just doesn't make sense. I don't understand this. Like, how is he playing these kind of stupid moves and then played so well later on in the game? Like, what? And so quickly. Because here we just have knight d4, bishop d7, queen d7, cd4. And yeah, we're just doing fine. Knight f6 was an inaccuracy, so we should have gone rook c8 or e6, bishop d6. This is what I should have done. And here, although this isn't apparently the perfect line, I could neutralize white's attack. Something like knight f3. Um, I don't know, like knight e7. Castle, castle. Like, I'm good. But knight f6 was just a bit inaccurate because it allows rook c1, e6, and I don't have time to defend. Queen b5, I think, was a good move. And here my opponent plays queen e2 and takes about 10 seconds, well, 5, five 10 seconds about it. Which, by the way, is always a really suspicious amount of time to be spending, like 5, 10 seconds, because that's how long it would take to put a move into an engine and see what it gets out. I think, I don't know if this is an unfounded, um, an unfounded criticism, but this video will be recorded a bit in advance before the um, like actual video comes out. So let's what what we should do right is when this video comes out, please whenever you're watching it, check out his account and see uh, what's happening because. 93.3% accuracy, basically no time spent, idiotic moves made in the opening, and then perfect middle game and end game play, down a pawn. What? And with no time. Queen e2 here is just such a crazy move to play. Because you're down a pawn and you're offering a queen trade. I mean, once you see it, obviously you understand the reasoning behind it. But, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is the most natural move. Queen c2 looks more realistic to me. Apparently it's worse, but I don't know. It looks more normal. I'm really not sure how to evaluate this position. Or even something like... I guess knight to f3 probably isn't good because of bishop to b4 check. I don't know, just offering a queen trade seems crazy. And I was like, I can't take this. And the computer agrees with me. I play the best move with queen to b6. I can't take because I'm just allowing him to play rook c1. And I have zero development. My best move is knight h5. Which I think I kind of considered this. But I was like, I don't know, something like bishop to g3. Which is a mistake apparently. Bishop e5 better. f6. Then bishop g3. I guess g7 will be vulnerable if I move my bishop. And I don't know. I thought that this just wasn't good enough. Because if I take the bishop, he also opens up the h file. And I've just got a lot of issues. So I thought queen b6 was the best. Engine agrees. Opponent castles. Which, I mean, that is a, you know, pretty um, normal move to play. The bishop d6 loses. It just loses, because I missed this idea. I was between bishop e7 and bishop b4. I rejected bishop to e7, because I thought he just doubles up and I can't castle. I do have bishop d8, I suppose, which I did miss. And then my opponent has to retreat. Why can't he come to c8? Because I'm supposed to just take on b2. Okay, realistically, I'm going to castle here, though. I'm never taking b2. 
and white has chances. Or bishop b4 was okay. But I thought, again, rook fc1, something like castles, and I just felt like I couldn't move. And, I don't know, my bishop... Yeah, I was like, a3, where do I move my bishop? Now I'm supposed to come back to d6 after I've castled. But what if, after bishop to b4, he goes a3? Am I supposed to take the knight? No, I was supposed to come back to e7. But as we established, I already thought bishop e7 was bad, because I didn't really consider this maneuver to d8. But even then, it doesn't look like a good position. So bishop d6 takes takes, and yeah, I miss queen b5 check. I have to go knight d7. Rook fc1, which by the way, by the way, that looks unnatural. To me, the obvious-ish move here is queen b7, because black has to has to play a move like queen sorry king e7 can no longer castle you have an incredible pin going it's not obvious how black escapes this position at all apparently i'm supposed to do this and then force a queen trade which i guess makes sense but okay what else rook c6 is a move and I mean, like queen b8, queen a6. This just looks crushing for white. If he can maneuver this knight in, it's game over. If he can dominate the c file and go rook back to c7, it's really difficult for me to move. I don't know. Rook f c1 here. I understand it, of course. But to find this move in, again, like, what, how much time? Three seconds he spent on this move? Because you get 10 seconds bonus time after every move. Went from 1550 to 1557. Spent three seconds. That's not a move you play that quickly. I'm sorry, but you calculate what happens if queen b7. You calculate what happens if rook b7. And you calculate what happens if rook fc1. There's no way he calculated that. And then can proceeded to play as good as, as well as he did. I'm just going to go back to his profile. and See if he's played again. He's, he's playing now. Okay, when I finish this analysis, we'll see his current game. And if he's playing insanely well again, then I think he's probably a cheater. I don't want to be, you know, accusing people like this, but it's a brand new account and he just crushed me and I'm rated 2000. Like, I'm a, I'm a good player. I'm not trying to boast or brag or anything like that. I'm just objectively a good chess player. And then Bro just plays a, one of the worst Karo Khan openings I've ever seen. And then proceeds to absolutely destroy me. Perfectly, by the way. Rook fc1, rook d8. It's my only real move because I need to try and castle. And rook b7, again. Queen b7, to me, looks way more natural. Because you're setting up the battery on the 7th rank. And you maintain the battery on the c-file. Instead, he spends 10 seconds. Takes on b7 with the rook. Which just looks weird. I castle, of course. And he takes on a7. Okay, G g3 was apparently a little bit better. Okay, the engine is now reconsidering and believes rook to a7 is better. Rook a7 is kind of the natural move. You could consider rook cc7, I suppose. And after, like, knight f6, then can you take? Okay, rook b8, and then I'm good. Somehow. Something like this. And the computer believes... No, it's changed its mind. It's not good. It's still bad, but it's not quite as bad. Rook a7. I mean, it's findable. Knight f6. Um, I just wasn't sure what to do. I did consider the move queen to f4. I know I was counter-attacking his knight, although my knight is hanging, but I just thought I had nothing. Like, I don't know, the queen can just retreat. Maybe this was better, because it makes my position more active. But, like, at the end of the day, he's going to double up on the 7th rank. The knight can always go to f1, and I have no attack. So, yeah, I went knight f6 to try and get active. g3. Like, I'm, obviously, g3 makes sense. It is also the best move by a long shot. But, again, he played it so quickly. Like, this is so natural. Although, I don't think it's good. But, again, because of some weird rook b8 line, which the computer's reconsidering anyway. 
So, I don't know. Very odd. G3, though. Okay, that's fine. Rook B8, Rook B7. Only move. So, I was, I was happy because, like, we were posing some issues to him, but... Rook B7 is, of course, a natural move. I suppose I could have let him trade, but I just wasn't sure. We go Rook BC8. He takes... Again, like, not really much fought. Maybe that's an obvious move, though. Um, I mean, Rook C5 makes sense, but maybe it's unnecessary. So, okay. Yeah, Rook C8, Rook C8, A4. A4 is the best move. Again, just like unequivocally, the best move. And again, he just didn't even think about it. He didn't even care to consider my Rook infiltrating or H5 or something. I go H5 because I'm trying to give my King uh, a Luff and get my Rook in somehow. A5, opponent completely unafraid. Again, doesn't even bother calculating any attack that I might have because he just plays the move instantly. Like, I don't know. Something like Knight F3 looks kind of natural to try and get in. King G2 to get off the back rank. B4, okay, yeah, makes sense. E5, of course, does make sense, but played so quickly. I mean, wow. Rook A8, I'm trying to stop the advancement. Knight B3. It was an interesting move. I honestly didn't really consider knight b3 that hard because I thought, oh, then I just go knight e4. Um, but okay, many moves are good. b4 is good, knight f3 is good, h4 is good. h4 I was trying to bait out, by the way. Try and weaken g3 somehow, and then maybe I can have some like knight e4, knight g3, pawn g3, queen g3, like um, perpetual ideas. I think this is where his accuracy was like, whoa, how are you finding these moves so quickly? Knight b3, okay, understandable. We go knight e4. He goes knight c5. He didn't even consider something like queen d7. Rook d7, rook d7, king f8. Apparently black is okay somehow. I mean, that was what I was scared of. Um, but yeah, knight c5 is by far the best move. Rook d7, he also didn't want to play. Apparently I just go queen f8, which I was considering with queen d7 anyway. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It just looks like a nice move. It looks like a very human move because what you're doing with the move rook d7 is you're not thinking like an engine. You're thinking, I'm up a pawn. I have two connected past pawns. I can just go rook d7 and boot his queen. And his queen either has to go to a6 and allow a queen trade. Or the queen has to go to f8 and it's a horrible piece. That looks like such a human move to play. It's also just a bit of a dopamine hit. Like, like oh, I attack his queen. Like, free dopamine, right? Again. He um, doesn't really spend much time on knight c5, which is the best move. And I really didn't know what I should do. I considered the move e5 to try and, like, undermine the knight. But I was like, he just takes... He takes something like queen takes and like this. Oh no, this hangs that. We can just do this, no? Okay, now the is still not perpetual. Maybe it poses more questions going e5, but he also doesn't have to take me. Apparently, he just ignores me and goes a6. Or takes, takes, and d5. But I took on c5 because my thought process was if queen c5, um, what was I going to do? I think queen a6 was the move I wanted to play. I think it was queen a6. And um, the idea was to attack the rook, attack the pawn, and maybe try and get in with some perpetuals. I don't even know, like something like this. Uh, going between e1 and, e4, and uh, e4. And yeah... White does have to be accurate here. Needs to find queen c7, queen e7, or rook b5. Rook b5 was the move I considered. I was going to go rook to c8. And I'd looked at queen b4. Queen b6 is also playable though. And then I thought maybe I have some chances to try and infiltrate. And I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. But he takes with the pawn. I go queen e5. And he just evaluates that there's no problems. And he goes b4. Which like... I don't know. It's the best move by far, and he just plays it again instantly. Less than 10 seconds. Playing a move immediately would be a sign that you're not cheating. 
like instantly zero thought required because you already know what you want to do and you already have guessed what your opponent's move is because you understand chess to a degree where you're like, okay, this is the most natural move for him and I will respond with this. If you're taking about 10 seconds a move, think about it. I play a move, you've got like your phone or your monitor, like your other monitor up and you're putting in the move the engine goes burr, 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 this is the move to play, and then you play it. That takes about, you know, 7 to 10 seconds. That's what most of his moves were played in. <sighs> I'm sorry, but, like, I know I'm a good chess player, and I don't just get beaten by random new accounts convincingly after a terrible opening, by the way, where maybe he wasn't using the computer. and. I just didn't have any chances. It The feeling that you get when you play a computer, right, when you just feel like you have nothing, like you have absolutely zero. I was spending so long in this game just being like, wait, what? How does that just do everything? Like, before I have nothing. Like, what? How? Um, How does that work? Um, Normally with humans, they give chances. I mean, I gave chances to my opponent in this game. I had a winning position. Not winning, but a very advantageous position. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I didn't play all the right moves, and my opponent therefore got chances, or the computer playing on my opponent's count, most likely. And then I got a lost position, right? B4, I go queen e1 check, queen f1, queen c3. I'm just trying to monitor things, right? A6. I mean, of course, that's completely findable. King h7. And by the way, by the way, rook f7 looks like such a natural move in this position. You give up b4, I suppose. But then you play moves like queen d3, and I don't know, this looks like a very human approach to the position. Um, yeah, I don't know. You've got a nice attack going. Uh, I suppose these haven't makes sense though. I go f5 because I don't know. I just don't know what to play, and I'm so low on time as well. Like, I don't know what I should have done. Everything's losing. I considered d4 quite considerably, uh, quite heavily even, but there's still nothing in the position. Like, I just don't have anything. I think I'd calculated. What I calculated. What was it? I think it was, um... Why did I reject this? Was it queen b1? Well, then I have d3. Maybe queen e2 was my issue. I think it might have been queen e2, looking at h5 and also trying to get onto this diagonal. And king h6 is the only move, which I did consider playing in some scenarios. I think just rook f7, and then after d3, I was like, I don't have anything. Like, at all. There was also some line where he promoted something like rook b8, although that just hangs a7, so I don't know why I didn't think about that. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I went f5 because I'm trying to block this diagonal off because I was scared. This is how humans play. Like, I was scared of a concept rather than a concrete calculation. And so I, you know, panicked a little bit and tried to combat said concept. Uh, computers don't play like that. My opponent goes queen e2. Which, I mean, it's a double attack, yeah. It's kind of an obvious move, I suppose. And I just went e5. I don't even know why I did that. I just didn't even see that h5 was hanging. I mean, I'm still losing... I did, I think, consider queen c1, queen h6. And although this is the top computer line, I don't want to play this as a human because there's nothing for me in the position anymore. My queen is passive. My rook is passive. His pawns are coming in. I can't do anything. So I don't want to make my queen passive. I did see this maneuver, but I was like, then I have nothing. Then both of my pieces can't do a thing. And uh, yeah, I just completely blunder. Uh, mate in this position but yeah like 93.3% accuracy I'll be interested to know your thoughts because he played the opening so badly 
and then the middle game and end game i mean late middle game i suppose perfectly and with no time spent i don't know i don't know what to think i'm gonna check his game now that he's playing if it loads i think he's playing right now and i think i'm gonna check this and if this is just as suspicious then i'll be pretty happy to say that he's cheating so let's see we have my opponent with the black pieces so let's look at it from his side of course we don't have the analysis board but classroom what the hell is classroom okay whatever sorry <laughs> e5 okay knight to f3 knight c6 plays the morphe defense this is just theory bishop b4 that doesn't look right again he's just playing stupid openings like no with the amount of skill that he's playing with, right? He should be more than good enough to know that bishop b4 is not a good idea. Like, bishop e7 is a move. I think bishop c5 is maybe a move because knight c3 is just weird. b6 is a move. Bishop b7 is maybe a move. But bishop b4, you never play in the Roy Lopez, really. Goes d6. Gets a horrible position. Yeah, knight d5. Bishop back. D3, H6. Okay, H6 makes sense. By the way, he spent a lot of time in the opening. Oh no, it's not showing me the times actually. Spent a lot of time on Bishop A5 anyway. Takes, takes. Bishop here. Bishop D7, yeah, makes sense. A4, castle. Bishop E3, Bishop B6. That's kind of a weird move, you know. Because after takes takes. Mm, no, come on. Let me go back. After takes takes take. Bruv. Here, here. He's just ruined his structure entirely. Like, that just looks like a really, really sad position to be playing with the black pieces. I don't know if I would have allowed that personally. Like, the position isn't great, sure, but I don't know. There's got to be better moves than bishop b6, at least to the human eye. Like, I don't know. Maybe it is hard to play, though. In all fairness, this is a really tough position. Maybe bishop b6 is necessary. c3, rook ab8. Again, you're just volunteering this doubling, but I, it won't let me play moves. This is really annoying. Okay, takes, takes, h3, rook a8. I don't know, maybe he wasn't, because these are some weird moves. b4 makes sense. Takes, takes, b5. Um, rook fb1, takes, takes, rook c8. Yeah, this makes sense. And now we're on this move. I don't know. I don't know if I... I don't know if my opponent was just very good. Like, that may well be the case. But it's weird. It's really weird. Um, I might check his account before this video goes live and then put in the comments. Um, like, I'll, I'll, like, pin a comment of mine or something saying kind of what my final verdict on it is. Very frustrating, though. Um, I would not be surprised if he was cheating. If he wasn't cheating, then he's severely underrated. Which, of course, is a new account. So, he's like, of course, he's probably underrated on a new account if he's a strong player. But a strong player would never play the opening like he did in my game or in that game that we were just looking at. So, I don't know. Annoying stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video anyway. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, boys, I found something incredibly interesting, and I planned to stop the video where it was, but I gave it a few hours, and I started digging around his account. So, I was the first person he played against. He then played this game, which was the one that we were looking at at the end of the video. He got a completely winning position. Let me go back to it. So, he's the black pieces here, right? Um, let me see if you guys can see this properly or not. One second. 
Okay, yeah. So he got a completely winning position. He's the black pieces. We looked up until here, I believe, in the game. Um, like in the live game, we saw up until here. Then his opponent traded everything on d4. Equal position. Down up, but um, black. Yeah, equal pawns even, because um, white has an f pawn. Black is then able to manufacture a completely winning position, which, in fairness, was nothing like groundbreaking. But what happens next is ridiculous. So we have king b6, king b4. Black plays king to a6 because this king can't get to c5 and has to step away. What's the move you play here? I mean, it's obvious, right? You play king a5. My opponent, well, I guess he was my opponent previously, but not in this game. Instead of going king a5, he goes king b6, because this is an equal evaluation <laughs> according to the engine, because the engine knows that white has nothing better but to repeat. Ridiculous. He then actually enters the position. Why didn't he do that the first time? I don't know. Opponent retreats, king b4, king d3, king c5, king e4, and he starts marching the pawn, right? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Anyone could do that. Okay, then king g7. Queen g1, takes the pawn, g6, queen comes to um, g5, sacrifices herself for the pawn. Okay, that makes sense, because you're trading down to one pawn, right? And clearly, this Tanmay Rajput guy is pretty good at chess because he convincingly beat me. This is assuming he didn't cheat. Now, from here on out, his time usage goes very weird because in my game and in most of this game, he was making every moves, every move in about five to ten seconds. So this is how the game goes, and it's completely drawn. Anyone with half a brain would move the king to shield the pawn and then put the pawn down the board. He then gets himself into a completely drawn position. And by the way, these moves by black were all pre-moves. So clearly he'd stopped using the engine because, I mean, I don't know. Personally, I would just automatically go something like the king here, king here, king here, king here king here, king here, and then we throw the pawn down. This is this is how you play king and pawn endgames, and it's nothing special. You just don't allow the king to come and cut you off. It's completely drawn. He then starts to actually use time once he's realised, oh, it's a draw. I've just blundered the position. In this position, he spent over a minute. And then, black is completely winning. After king e4, king d1, I think the move is king d5, because you maintain opposition from a distance. Um, This is also winning. Yeah, yeah, this also wins. The king goes back for some reason. He's still winning, and then he draws the game with d2 check. What? Like, I don't get it. I honestly don't understand. Like, you have to triangulate, I assume. Where's the win? If the White King shuffles... Am I missing something obvious? This is a draw. Wait, where is the win? Actually, <laughs> am I just an idiot? Am I a complete idiot? The black is completely winning. Here. King e4. King d1. King d4. King c1. Ah, yeah, and then you get this position and force the king out. Why was I not able to find that? I don't know. 
So after this. So basically, you want to play d2 when the king is on d1. So you want to try and force the king to d1. Am I? What? Okay, the analysis has now decided that it's drawn. I don't know if the computer was just wrong. Anyway. Anyway, he draws the position that was obviously completely winning. And I'm like, huh, that doesn't make much sense. What about his other games? Like, is there anything interesting in the other games that he's played? Has he just crushed everyone? Uh, wrong account, this one. Yeah, there's a bit of a rabbit hole here. So, okay, he goes and wins the next game. Um, I haven't actually had a look at the game. But we can take a quick look at it. Here. Sorry, this is really annoying me because, like, it's just. <sighs> Sorry, you'll 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 figure out why I'm annoyed. You'll figure out. So he's the white pieces. What's the opening? It's a retty. Okay. Um, plays a very interesting line. I don't know what the opponent's doing, to be honest. Okay, these moves make sense. Bishop f6, pawn f6, queen f6, g... g4? Okay, wow. That's a bold move. Queen d2 is odd. That is so weird. Like, surely c3 is the natural move. Now, I think the reason this isn't the best move is queen to c5, and you can't take because of take. So you take the rook here, and then the queen takes back. And this is slightly worse than queen d2. But obviously, you just go up and exchange, and as the white pieces, why wouldn't you do that? You can take on um, c6 if you want as well, and then come into e7 with check, completely crushing. So uh, yeah, queen d2 is very, very weird. You also only had one mistake this entire game. Probably an incredibly high accuracy. Okay. Well, I don't know. Still, it's just like a very strange game. But more pressingly, is that even a word? More pressing is the fact that if we go on to this guy's profile... Oh my god, please. What are you doing? We can see that he's been playing an awful lot of Rapid. He's won, drawn, won, and then he's lost, 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 lost. All to the same person in 33 moves, in 6 moves, in 22 moves, in 22 moves. Which was basically the exact same position. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it was basically the same ending position. And then lost in 6 moves again in the same ending position as the other game was 6 moves. Then lost in 13 moves. And then lost in 26 moves. All to the same player. Now let's look at this guy. Rood Crash 0008. Okay. So this profile's been around for a while. Since November 2023. So let's look at his profile then. He has been playing... With some incredibly high accuracies. 97.9, 94.3, 94.5. Okay, then. You can then see the account that we were previously looking at, Tanme Rajput, is what we were just looking at. And if you have a quick scroll up here, he just played a bunch of games against Tanme Rajput, won all of them. Previous to that, um, earlier today, actually, June 25th, which is the time of recording, he played a bunch of games against Ruja Rudraji, which, wouldn't you know it, he won in barely any moves, all in basically the same position. They're just variations of the Roy Lopez. And um, if we check Rudraj's profile, all he has done is lose games against this guy. Okay. And there's more. There is more. Clearly, this guy is trying to boost his rating. And um, that is not cool. That is not cool. Because what he's done is 
He's creating new accounts, playing a few rapid games, cheating in those rapid games to win, therefore getting more rating on the burner account, which he then is sending to play against his main account to try and boost his rating for whatever reason. So, yeah, it's just so odd. Look, 99% accuracy. How is that even possible? Like, Grandmasters don't even get 99% accuracy. Which, wait, by the way, how many moves was that? 16, okay, 16 moves, that's very doable. Okay, that's fair. Well, it's not really fair, but like, you know, 94.6, 94 94.6, 94.3, 97.9. It, it's, it's an absolute joke. Absolute joke. And, um... Yeah, I really don't understand it. Like, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, yeah, there was also an account here that was closed for fair play, which they're all Indian accounts, by the way, which, um, I mean, obviously a lot of Indians play chess, but, you know, you know. And this this guy with the banned account also got insanely high accuracies, and I believe he played against uh, Rude Crash down here, and they drew. Now, whether this account is associated or not, I don't know. But the fact that this account is clearly, like, a cheating account, right, that was banned for fair play, and my man managed to draw with it on his main account. I mean, let's just have a look at this game real quick. So, Rude Crash is the guy that we don't like. Um, playing as the black pieces. We have a normal Roy Lopez. Okay, this is just theory, I assume. F6. Okay, wow. And I think they end up agreeing to a draw. A very weird position. Okay, here they just agree to a draw. The game itself is not particularly important, although both of them played basically perfectly and just played perfect theory. More important is the fact that this guy that he's playing against, Adar Shahey, I don't know if he's associated with Rud Crash's account or not, but more importantly, he's clearly a cheater, and Bro managed to draw with him. So I think that's pretty conclusive. Um, I'm now happy to say that he cheated, and clearly this account is associated with the account that I played. Um, yeah, I think I just literally forgot to check before I actually started playing the game to see how long ago the account was created. If I'd have seen it was created like 30 minutes ago, there's no way I would ever play. I would immediately abort the game, because chances are it's a cheater, unfortunately. So, you know... Very frustrating. Um, hopefully, this guy also gets banned. So please do drop him a report if um, you agree with my analysis um, of this situation. But this is the state of chess.com at the moment. And I don't know what chess.com is supposed to do about it, uh, in all honesty. Like, you know, I understand it's really difficult to spot, especially because he's really tactically doing this. Where in our game, he played a horrible opening and then played perfectly to make sure his accuracy wasn't like 100, right? He's tactically doing this to make it more difficult to catch. And unless it's like a human review, right? This is basically what chess.com would be doing if they were doing a human review. Not only does it take a while, right? But also it was only conclusive once I managed to find all the connections, right? If I didn't find that, I don't know if I could conclusively say it or not with, like, a clean conscience. Now I can, because it, clearly it's a cheating account and it's trying to boost rating on this account for some reason. So make sure we get him banned, boys. Um, yeah, that's it, really. I hope the video was at least um, somewhat entertaining. And I, I, to be fair, I did kind of hold my own against him, although I obviously got a completely winning opening, which I threw away. But um, yeah, that is chess.com at the end of the day, and I really hope it gets solved. I'll see you in the next one.